Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. I was asked to create some dino designs and that's what I've done. I've got two new designs on the website and we'll take a look at those and I'll explain them both to you right after this. Okay, so this is going to be a relatively short video. As I said, these designs or some dino designs were requested. So let's jump over here to hobowithwood.com and take a look at these two new designs and I'll explain how they work. I'll open up uh, one of them in Lightburn and show you how simple these are to use. All right, so at this time of this recording, when you go to the home page, the new products, the first two pieces that pull up are the T-Rex Dino name plaque and the T-Rex Dino door trim. So let's look at the door trim first. So it's, uh, I've got four different images here that you can look at in the gallery. Uh, so you can see some good close up detail of them. I used the uh, offset feel to create a unique look with the dinosaur. And then it's actually three layers. That's on the first layer. Then I've got a second layer there. And then the third layer that's on top of it. Each of those done with varying lines per inch and different scan angles to create a different texture or a different look to that. That I felt like gave it more weight and help keep it balanced up on top of the door ledge. And then down the side, I decided to go with a second layer with the name. And I did this for two reasons. I did this so that if I've got uh, some of my viewers and uh, folks buying my files that are going to craft shows and selling these designs, you could actually have this entire design cut out and ready with everything minus the name. And you'd probably even have folks that want to buy it without a name. But if they want to personalize it, then all you got to do is jump in here and cut out the name and you can glue it right on top of the footprint file there or the footprint uh, layer, just adding more depth to the piece. And I opted not to cut out the inner pieces of the OBO uh, because I didn't want it to be so confusing and, and seeing the the feet print back in behind there uh, that's personal preference you can cut it out or not cut it out but it's just a matter of typing out the name creating an offset hit and put the offset on a cut layer engrave cut it out and ready to go but this total piece is scalable now i think this one i cut out is about uh, about 14 inches tall and about uh, 10 or 12 inches wide and I like the look of that uh, offset feel it's something you can play with and find what you like what what appeals to you or you can simply do uh, an outline engrave and not a feel and then uh, set it up and paint it and maybe even let the grandkids paint it themselves with some little paint kits but this is a simple piece. I've got it on the website now. And let's see here. Uh, where, where? I think it's at the top. Yep. Got it on right now for $4.99. And that's something you could create. Uh, like I said, sell them at the craft shows and easily sell those for $15, $20 a piece. Uh, minimum. Minimum. Now, the next file is a dino name plaque. Now, this one is a little bit more advanced, and we're going to actually open this one up in Lightburn. And this one is one that I opt to, to, to paint. And I used those uh, famous colors from that famous movie to, to emulate that look. And if you'll look here, I've got the forest, the jungle painted, you know, green. And then as it comes up the layer, the green kind of starts to blend into and fade into the black of the dino. I did all that with just a spray bomb, painted it all black first, 
and then once it was painted black I went back in and painted the the green layer nice and heavy with the green at the bottom and then as I got closer and closer up here I you know went further and further away with the can to make that start to blend in and bleed in and then it actually even created some slight overspray in the areas on here and it looked good because it created some additional texture and spots on the dyno like he's maybe muddy or whatever I liked it but there's uh, one two three four layers here you've got a yellow red green and then white layer and I'm going to explain all of that in Lightburn uh, and show you how easy this is to make with this template as you see here I've got this one on the website at $7.99 and there's a lot of work went into designing it but with the way I've got it laid out now it's gonna be so simple for you and these personalized like this uh, you could sell these easily for anywhere from $29 and up you know I, I was getting 49 bucks out of these locally if I make making them uh, up to 12 inches uh, tall they are scalable I do a little smaller ones for uh, about six or eight inches tall and I'll sell those for 20 24 dollars in fact uh, here's some smaller ones that's a quarter in the photograph for a reference and the Spidey file is on here too. If you haven't seen the Spidey file, it's on the website already. So you can have, uh, if you got two different kids or grandkids, one likes the dinos, one likes superheroes, uh, you can do a Spidey name and a dino name. But let's jump over into Lightburn and take a look at what you have to do to set these up. And see how shiny that is? How slick and wet looking that is? Well, that's dry boys and girls that is dry as can be that that is that look is created by using the uh, rust-oleum triple thick glaze and I need to fix that that should be a link and it's not so I'll get that fixed so that the link is working but you can copy and paste it if the link isn't fixed by the time you see this video but let's jump over to Lightburn and let's take a look at what you have to do let's select that and delete it the text that I use to give that look is the Greek diner inline and I have when you open the file from hobowithwood.com this is what you'll see three layers plus uh, a key hanger key slot hanger that you can this would be the back piece that glues directly to the very backboard then you glue this right on top of there and then that's a nice wooden hanger that you can mount this on the wall or opt not to do that and they can use uh, one of those little 3m hangers but uh, I like those wooden key hangers it adds a homemade or a, you know a handmade feel to it it's not machine made so on these three layers this is your back layer this is your second layer this is your third layer and this is not grouped in the third layer because I'm going to be using this inner toolpath and I didn't want to move that so let's go back there we go this inner toolpath is where I'm going to put my name so if I'm going to come in here start typing out the name uh, let's see here uh, we'll go with I don't know why I'm having a hard time picking a name right now. I'm trying to think everything, you know, Hobo, Steve. I wanted something a little bit longer. Let's go with uh, uh, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Michael. There we go. Now, that's just a little bit big. So I'm going to shrink it down. Holding my... Actually, you know what? First, I'm going to select... I've got that selected. I'm going to select just that toolpath and center it. There we go. Now deselect it all and I'm going to select just the name and the M and the L. It's not, it's not over past it. In fact, it's not too bad, but I'm going to decrease my horizontal spacing about there and then hold my shift button, select the toolpath and center it up again. That's better. I like that. All right. Now, that's good left to right, but I'm still not overlapping my rectangle top to bottom. So I can select the name 
hold my control button and then draw this up until I'm overlapping on all points of the letters top and bottom that looks good now if I'm happy with that first thing I'm gonna do is select the name and say control D duplicate it now that I've got a duplication of that I'm gonna set it over here to the side now I'm going to take my name, hold my shift button, and select that toolpath. Actually, you know what? Did that backward. I'm going to select the toolpath, hold the shift button, and select the name. Now hit your Boolean subtraction tool right here. A subtract B. And that, boys and girls, is all you have to do to cut that out. That is ready to go. And what you'll do, if you take and select that entire image there, I'm going to duplicate it and put it over here on the work bed. Now we'll look at a preview. So that's what you'll get once that cuts out. But to really make this pop, then what you do is you take that second duplication, cut it out on its own, all on its own, I painted it that nice bright white and then glue it right on top of there and that will give you that finished look. So it's not difficult to do, easy to assemble. This is not one that you would do at the craft shows or craft fairs. Uh, you could advertise it and, and sell it and they could pick it up later or if you're at a weekly craft show, you, they could pre-order it and pick it up next week. But those are really good looking pieces. But if, you, if you're not doing craft shows, they're great for your own personal use. But the corner door trim is something that you could pre-produce the dyno. Well, let's come on down here. You could pre-produce the dyno that, with the angle piece and the feet print the feet print, the footprints, and sell that even as is, no personalization. In fact, let's just jump over to Lightburn and look at that, how it comes in from hobowithwood.com. File, new, no, don't need to save anything. File, open, and let's go to the dino door. All right. So this is how that will come in from Lightburn. I have it on multiple layers. And as I said, the offset fill is what I used on the dyno. And also on the, uh, the two different layers for the, the rock path that he's crawling on and on the footprints. Footprints or feet print? The feet print all those prints from the dyno there we go but each of those layers having varying LPIs and varying scan um, angles create different looks to each piece and you can play with the LPIs and create the, the look you want or change it from an offset field to just a line and then that'd engrave just the outline of it and you can hand paint it and do whatever you want with it. But as you import it, it will come in with the offset fields. You should do all your engravings first, your fields and or engravings, and then do your cut path. But if you're gonna add a name to this, you could, like I said, you could pre-make these, have these sell just as is. But if someone wants it personalized and you're at a craft show with your laser, it's just a matter of picking out which font you want, and we don't want to do the Greek for this one. Uh, I would recommend something kind of simple. Uh, let's do uh, Bodini, but there we go there. And uh, H, enter, O, enter, B, enter, O, nope, O. And now I need to decrease that line interval or that H. The, no, the vertical spacing is what's messed up here. Not messed up, but 
depending on how close you need those letters to be. And I personally wouldn't do more than about a two and a half millimeter offset on this design. So if you come over here and do offset, there's two, say a two and a half millimeter. Those are connected, but they're barely connected. Let's bump it up to three. That's better. It's getting a little, little thick, but uh, and yeah, and and if you do outer shapes only, you turn that off, and you can get that inner piece in there. Here, it's awful small. Let's go back to two and a half millimeters. But you're going to glue this up anyway. And put our actual engraving on a cut pad or engrave line. There we go. So that'll cut out or engrave and cut out. That'll be a separate piece that you could then size it correctly and glue it right on top of these. Now, on my design or the one I pre assembled, I went with it over here closer to the door jam so that the, these feet here weren't completely covered up. I, that's my personal preference. You can do as you like and as you please. But these were some simple designs. And here is my live and in-person dino. Rawr. <laughs> uh, and... I probably would do those differently. I like the idea of that Bodini. I like that, or Bondini, Bodini. But I wanted to do something quick, put that together and get it up there. So now, like I said, these dino designs were requested. So hopefully these will fill the bill for that. And now I can move on to Mother's Day ideas, graduation ideas, and if you've got something that you'd like to see, send me your request at hobowithwood at gmail.com and I might get around to doing that. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to all my patrons. Without my patrons, hobowithwood.com and hobowithwood on YouTube would not be here. I would not have the ability to play and design and, and uh, and continue to teach others how to do what I do when I do what I do. So thank you, patrons, each and every one of you. If you want to consider supporting the channel, patreon.com slash hobowithwood would be greatly appreciated. Hobowithwood.com to take a look at all these files. And I am going to get out of here and get ready for the next task we're going to create. I'm going to be showing you this week how I actually engrave oh, bah, the leather flask. Uh, you guys may have seen it in some of the other videos, but I've got a video, uh, a design that goes with hand in hand with the uh, Revenuers Reserve from John Schneider, and I do these on the Rolly Lasermatic, but. This is too thick to sit on the honeycomb table. The jig table, if I had it, would still even be too tall. And taking the, the honeycomb out and just placing this in the bed, it, you could do that. And if you're going to do one a one-off, you could you know get it positioned and move your graphic where you wanted it. But I got to do you know 20 of these at a time. And you don't want to lay one of these in the laser bed and then have to move your graphic around each time. You really need to be able to position this and place it in the same spot over and over and do that repeatability. The lasermatic has the ability, but when you have no honeycomb and no reference point, what do you do? Well, I'm going to show you that this week. Uh, and we're probably even going to do some of these live on this upcoming Saturday night and uh, possibly be uh possibly do a giveaway of a couple of laser engraved leather wrapped flask 
I won't be giving away the Revenuers Reserve. Those are strictly available on johnschneiderstudios.com, but I can make you your custom leather-wrapped flask if you're tuned in for the upcoming live stream on March. It'll be, today is the 12th. The next live stream will be the 16th, March 16th at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll be doing a live demonstration of the leather engraving and how I created the ability to replicate the same design and have the repeatability when there's nowhere to set it. So don't want to miss that. So until then, I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out of here. See you in the next video.